So my name is John Olson. Uh, I have a Model 3 uh, performance and one of the things that uh, was really bothering me was I couldn't get into my car sometimes when my phone didn't work or when I left my phone someplace. So I've been following RFID implants and it looks as if, you know, the technology got to the point where I had some faith in it. Um, so I ordered a chip and I implanted it in my hand. Um, most of the time I would do small implants myself. But my brother actually uh, had um, been a body modification uh, um, person at a uh, tattoo parlor. So he does piercings and other types of like implants, studs, things like that. And so he came down from the upper Michigan to be able to uh, um, install it for me. I've had the implant for seven days. Uh, the chip that's for Tesla is seven millimeters by 32 millimeters, and it's only a half a millimeter thick, so it kind of looks like a very small little dipstick. Uh, the chip was kind of surprisingly large compared to the tinier RFIDs that are usually only two millimeters. But the Tesla chip requires a lot more power, so it has a big coil. How many implants do you have? I have three. Actually, this is only one implant, but it has two separate processors. Well, that second implant, um, what you can do with it is the primary uh, um, use of it is that I can use it for accessing the maker space. I can use it to access the building at work. Um, I can use it to access the equipment here. But I'm also putting RFID readers in my house to experiment with, you know, the uh, utility and convenience of having RFID and to find out what some of the uh, um, uh, uh, liabilities are, the risks, um, just to see realistically is this technology something's going to happen in the future. Well, for one thing, it's the convenience, um, you know, as far as I've driven to the makerspace and uh, then reached in my pocket for my key fob and realized I don't carry keys anymore and the key fob's back at home. Now, uh, when my hands are full and, you know, I got to try to reach in my pocket and get out the key fob and fumble for the keys, now all I have to do is put the hand while I'm holding on to something up against the reader, door unlocks, and, you know, you can do all the juggling like you normally do when you try to come in. That's nice. Um, also, when I walk out to the Tesla, many times I'm charging my phone or I'm downloading some, uh, some new update and I'm leaving it in the house. Now I use you know, the, the, the Tesla chip. I'm using it surprisingly more than I thought I would. All right, so to unlock my car, I gotta remember which chip to do it. It's the Tesla one. So I put it right here, it unlocks the door, and it also allows me to drive the vehicle. As far as where to get the chips, I ran across this uh, site called Dangerous Things, and they provided some of the equipment you would need to do it as well. They also had instructional videos, and I saw other people on their site do the implants. So I actually, even though it was probably a little more expensive, I purchased it from a site called Dangerous Things. So uh, as far as where to implant the chips, I actually implanted the small one here first, two millimeters by 14 millimeters. There were a lot of locations in this area that they recommend. It's outside of where you're gonna impact something, um, if you're gonna block, you're gonna punch you know anytime you're gonna get hurt it's most likely gonna be in the fingers and knuckles this exposed area so this is an area that that doesn't get used much for being impacted um, it's also an area where there isn't a lot of nerves or tendons or anything to be able to get in the way so this is the classic position on where to install most RFID chips mm -hmm. the Tesla implant was a lot larger and so some people have implanted it in their forearms but um, when I did tests, it seemed like the thinner skin would be the best place to install it. So I chose a location that is outside of any of my knuckle movement because they don't want you to overflex the chip. And so it actually starts here and ends here. And this Band-Aid is covering over a very small incision that was used to install it. Trying to keep it closed, they say for two weeks until it heals. Um, what you want to do is reduce the chance of an infection. Um, the other thing that I noticed was that um, they it seemed like the easiest way to install it was with a, a needle that, that they use. It's kind of a four gauge needle. You use it to like put giant implants in your ear or do piercings. Um, but 
it actually cuts kind of deep into your body and doesn't keep it up underneath the layer of skin. And uh, as when we did the research, we found that, you know, pulling up, you know, the skin um, separates it from the, the, the fascia down below and you just slide the insert underneath. And surprisingly, um, uh, the experience of getting it uh, inserted was not painful at all, um, mainly because I bought the pain management kit, um, which was a small needle that was used to uh, numb the area where the insertion went. Um, where a lot of people who get the gauge needle, they just insert it and it's a quarter inch needle. It's, it looks like a straw with a sharpened edge. It's pretty vicious. Well, I've always uh, liked the idea at some point in the future to be part of like the neural lace program or to be able to get a math coprocessor chip or to be able to um, interface with technology in a more um, intimate way. Um, I got LASIK done as soon as it was able to improve my vision, so I, I got that done. And then I've been following RFID chips for quite some time to where one would be practical. Once the space started implementing a bunch of RFID chips here to be able to access equipment, and my Model 3, they, a chip became uh, available, it was pretty much now's the time to uh, try the technology out and see if it uh, works up to what my expectations are. Yeah, if anyone who wants to do some body modifications, I think the most important thing is to do your research and to uh, have a sterile environment and have a good plan. Work with, you know, uh, if you don't know people or know someone in the medical industry who's willing to help, definitely reach out to, you know, a body modification uh, um, experts that are willing to do implants. Um, it is neat to have technology underneath your skin where you cannot see it and where it can actually be practical and usable. Um, I look forward to more advancements being available to the public in the future. If you want to learn more about RFID implants, please check out John's extended interview. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and come on over and visit us at 300mpg.org. Until next time, stay charged up.